Services here, Southside Church of Christ in this city, beautiful Orlando, Florida. Again, we're so happy, elated, glad, thankful that you've carved time out of your arduous schedule to be a participant in the worship services here at the Southside Church of Christ. Let's open as we always open Southside and beyond. One, two, three. When you talk with God, no breath is lost. When you walk with God, no strength is lost. When you wait for God, no time is lost. And when you trust in God, your soul will never, ever be lost. Remind everyone that you can follow us, watch us, worship with us, study with us on the Southside Facebook, Southside YouTube channel, Southside website, sscoc.org, and the Southside app. That's every Sunday morning, 11 a.m., Every Wednesday night, 7 p.m., join us here at Southside. Beloved, exciting, exhilarating news that Southside will reopen. We will reopen for corporate worship on Sunday, July 4th, Independence Day. Sunday, July 4th, Independence Day is the grand reopening for corporate worship at the Southside Church. We've been worshiping all the time, but we will reopen for corporate and collaborative worship on Sunday, July 
forth. Now, there will be some guidelines, some expectations we will have for you. You'll see it in our constant contact. You'll see it on Facebook. You'll see it, you'll hear me announcing it. You'll see it on our app and our website. We will mandate mask wearing. I am keenly aware that Orange County and predominantly the country has lifted all restrictions. We, for the month of July only, will mandate mask. We may lift it two weeks in, just depends on what the numbers say. But we will start out with a mask mandate in all of July. We still strongly encourage you to be vaccinated. We will not mandate that you be va vaccinated. We strongly encourage you. Now, when I ask you to be vaccinated and want you to be, that's for you. That, that's not for us. those of us who've been vaccinated. We stand a really good chance of not getting the virus. But if you have not been vaccinated, came here and we're carriers, even though we've been vaccinated, we still can be carriers. We can give it to you and do you irreparable harm. So we want you to be vaccinated. We won't mandate it, but we highly recommend it and encourage you. Other things you need to know, when you walk in on July 4th, you pick up your communion packet and you will drop it off on your way out. The giving boxes will be in the back of the church. No, we won't pass communion. We won't pick up communion. We're not passing baskets. The worship service will look similar to how it's been looking for the last 15 months. I will be here uh, outside of me and the singers. Nobody else will be up front, but you will be in the audience. What a blessing. God is blessed. All the requests will be written requests. The elders who will read and pray about that at the end of the service. So listen, beloved, and lastly, we want to encourage all families to sit together to minimize exposure. And when we dismiss, no one, but no one will be allowed to fellowship, hug, kiss, and come rod in the church. You would have to go outside to do that. So we're just thankful, glad, and happy. We're on the brink and the cusp of joining uh, and worshiping together on the one roof. Uh, beloved, uh, Courtney Daisy, these are the middle of the month in June um, birthdays. Courtney Daisy, Young Preston Salters, Zell Cromedy III, Milton Scott Jr., Deacon Isaac Peterson on Tuesday, happy birthday, Deacon. Mary Scott, happy birthday. Lakeisha Duncan, Marie Brown Graham, great member. Kenesha Price, Roberta Davis, Madison Gabriel, Bria Jackson, Janelle McDuffie. Look at all these favorite members. Felicia Haslam Davis, yay. William Walker Sr. has a birthday. Melvin Austin, all of these are in the middle of the month. Next week, we'll start going to the end of the month. Uh, happy birthday, one and all. And then the anniversaries, of course, is James and Quatrice Lewis. Beloved, uh, it's time to do some teach preaching today. Uh, if you would be so beneficently kind, I want you to open your Bible to the gospel according to Luke. The chapter is six, and I just need one verse. Really, I just need one word out of one verse. Luke chapter six, verse 38. Luke chapter six, Verse number 38. Here's what the Lord said. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will men put into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye use, it will be, that you give, it will be measured back to you. Beloved, I want to talk to you today from a theme, the debt we owe and the seed we sow. This sermon is encapsulated in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Let's read it again. Luke 6, 38. It says, give. Stop right there. That's all you really need to know. Give. Our dear beloved brother, friend of Christ, physician, records this interesting interrogative gospel that we call the book of Luke. 
As you can tell, the words are in red, which means they're written by Christ himself. In this text, Jesus gives guidelines. He gives us a template, a schematic diagram on why and how we ought to give. This text provides evidence that the Bible is deep and shallow at the same time. The Bible is so deep that scholars can jump in and never touch the bottom. Yet the Bible is so shallow that babies can wade in the water and not drown. I came by to tell you today, beloved, without a shadow of a doubt, that every Christian's responsibility is to give. That's why you really can capsule this sermon on one word, the first word in the 38th verse, give. It's enough to preach on throughout eternity. Giving is the essence of God. Giving ought to be the goal of every Christian because we are never more like God than when we give. That's why the epicenter of the Bible in John 3.16 declares, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Yes, beloved, a thousand times, yes. When we give, we mimic God. When we give, we parrot God. When we give, we emulate and duplicate God. Uh, I need to just put this under one umbrella. That giving is a debt we owe and a seed we sow. The first thing I need to drop into your hearing today is this. Let's talk about what giving is not. <laughs> giving is not paying. Giving is not paying. Don't get it confused. In the Old Testament, they call it the tithe. It's tithe means 10 or 10%. In the Old Testament, the tithe was the debt we owe. In the New Testament, giving is the seed we sow. In Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30, the Bible said the tithe is holy. And the Bible goes on to say, it's the Lord's tithe. It's not yours. It's not mine. It was a debt we owe. And the Bible says in Leviticus 27, 30, it's the Lord's tithe. Uh, apostrophe S, after Lord. And apostrophe means ownership when you say S behind it. That means you can't pay your tithes. It was not yours to begin with. Uh, I came by to tell you, when you pay tithes or you give to God, you're just releasing the money that God let you hold. Preach, Brother Leonard. It's not your money. You don't even belong to God. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, you are not your own. We belong to God. So if you don't even belong to you, you know good at God. Well, your money don't belong to you. You're just releasing what God let you have. Yes, it's a debt we owe. And it's a seed we sow. I, I need to develop that. You pay your debt and you plant a seed when you give. It's not my money. When I give, I ain't paying, I give. When I give, I'll not be so concerned about how much money I gave. What I need to be concerned about, how much of God's money did I keep? Because it ain't none of it my money. So when I gave, I gave him his money. What I got left is still his money. So I learned a long time ago to stop looking at what I gave and start looking at what I got left. I came by to tell you today, beloved, that's why tithing is still a good template. I'm not talking about the command of tithing. It's a good schematic diagram. It's, it's a good example. It, it's a good threshold for even Christians today because you don't have to be a mathematician 
to understand tithing. Every a dime out of every dollar belongs to God. That, that's the premise behind tithing. You got a dollar, you owe God a dime. See, you don't have to go far in school. This is what I like about God. This is what I don't like about the government. Listen, they're taxing you and I 25, 30%. If God don't want the 10% from me, I know the government ought to be able to live off less than what they're getting from me. Well, that's a whole other subject. But I want to tell you today, tithing, you don't have to be a mathematician to understand the premise of tithing in the Old Testament. You got a dollar, your debt is a dime. God then, here's what I like about it. He won't ask you for a dime until he gives you a dollar. <laughs> he never requests from you what he has not given to you. Preach, Brother Leonard. Other folk and other entities are different. They don't care what you make when you go to the car lot to buy a car, you go to a restaurant to get a meal. They charge everybody the same price. But God charges you. He says, you owe me based on how I blessed you. So before he requests anything from you, he'll give it to you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Before God look for a dime from you, he'll put a dollar in your hand. Preach, Brother Leonard. And God is the only one that will reward you for paying your own debt. Preach, but I get happy when I talk about giving. I know some of y'all getting ready to turn me off. If you ain't turned me off already, don't you do that. Don't you touch that dial. There's a blessing in this today. If you pay your mortgage, you pay your debt, they'll send you a letter thanking you, and then you start getting letters from people trying to get you in more debt. They don't reward you. They try to get you in more debt. But when you pay your debt to God and you plant a seed in the kingdom, God will reward you for paying the debt you owe him. The Bible says he then will open up a window and pull, pull you out blessings you can't even stand. Well, y'all done got quiet on me. Let, let me. let me hasten. I got three quick alliterations on giving today. It's the debt we owe. And giving is the seed we sow. Listen, beloved, listen. In Matthew chapter 23, I'm teach preaching today. Matthew 23, 23, Jesus said this. Woe, uh, you scribes, you Pharisees, and you hypocrites. Now, you don't have to go far in school to know. Woe means stop. Woe means pull up. Woe means halt. Jesus said, woe, you scribes. And, of course, scribes are those who transcribed the law. They wrote the scrolls and the manuscripts. They would re-record what was already written. That's what we get our word transcribed from. That's what a stenographer does in the courtroom. They were scribes. He says, woe scribes, woe Pharisees. Pharisees were those who would take the law that God gave Moses and they would add their own rules and regulations to the word of God or the law of God. We still got some uh, Pharisees. God said this, but they want to add that. They want to add their two cents. They want to make laws where God never made laws. They want to erase things that God says, okay, we still, woe you Pharisees. And then lastly, he said, you hypocrite. Hypocrite, that word means you're a play actor. You act one way today. You act another way later today or another way tomorrow. It's a play actor. That's what a hypocrite is. You act like, or my dear said, you may tent like you're something that you're not. That's all TV is, is play actors. Don't you get confused when you watch a TV and thinking you watch. That's play actors. Y'all saw that movie, Waiting to Exhale? They were play actors. You know how I know they were play actors? Ain't no way a black woman can burn up a black man's BMW and live. <laughs> they were play acting. Don't you get it confused? Jesus said, whoa, you scribes. Whoa, you Pharisees. Whoa, you hypocrites. And after the word hypocrites, there's an apost uh, I mean, an exclamation point. And my English teacher told me when you see an exclamation point, that means uh, what was said prior to that deserves emphasis. So it ought to read like this. 
Woe, scribes, woe, Pharisees, and hypocrites. You say it louder. You put emphasis on it. And the reason he says, woe, hypocrites, he said, even the hypocrites then, when Jesus lived, paid their tithes. So what he was trying to tell us, when you don't pay what you owe, you don't give, you don't pay your tithe, you are worse than a hypocrite. I, I need to develop this further. Listen to me. Anytime there's confusion in the Bible about what a word means, or there's confusion or an issue about how to clarify, it's called a law of first mention. Go and see how God, what God meant the first time he meant, mentioned that situation, and that's how he feels all the time. The first time in the Bible the word tithe, oh Lord, first time in the Bible the word tithe is used is Genesis, the 14th chapter. Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek. And the Bible says he paid it out of gratitude. Now remember, Melchizedek is a symbolic figure of Jesus. He has no earthly beginning, no earthly end. Abraham tithe a 10% to Melchizedek out of gratitude. Christians paid their tithes then and are now out of gratitude. It's what you owe. And then when you give, it's the seed that you sow. Malachi 3 still says, will a man rob God? How do you rob God? In tithes and offering. What the Bible teaches again and again, beloved. I know it's hard teaching. I know y'all want to shout and have candy, cotton candy service. But we have to talk about giving every now and then. Not because we need or want your money. Giving ain't blessing me or the church. Giving blesses you. Preach, Brother Leonard. God wants us to develop this mentality that we trust him with our money. Oh, yeah, some of you trust God with your life. You trust God with your family. Trust God with your wife. Trust God with your husband, your children, your grandchildren. But you want to trust him with your money. I came by to tell you today, beloved, giving is the debt we owe and the seed that we sow. Now, you got to remember, God don't count the way you count. God said, in the tithe, I want 10%. In the New Testament, God even went farther to explain to us that he don't count the way we count. In Luke's gospel, this same gospel, the Bible said there was a widow woman that gave two mites or two pennies. But God don't count like you count. He said he gave, that woman who gave two pennies gave more than everybody else because God counts different than us. God don't count what you gave. He counts what you got left. I keep telling you that. She gave all. Other people gave more, but they didn't give all. And so, beloved, let me, let me quickly help you here, and I'm going to my seat. God expects us to give. God then explains how we give, and then God lets you know he would expand. He expects he explains, right here in one verse, he expects, he explains, and he expands. You know how he, I know he expects it. He says, give. He used imperative tone or imperative mood, which means when he says give, it's a command. It's not a recommendation. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. Give, right there in Luke 38. He expects us to give because it don't belong to me. It don't belong to you. The benefit for you and I is to give. See, I've learned to stop living out of my own pocket. Yeah, I live out of God's pocket. You know, because when I give it to him, he can do more with my money than I can do with my money. I live out of God's pocket. When you see blessed folk in the church, that's because they give. And they live out of God's pocket. Your problem is you're trying to live out of your pocket. Well, I came by to tell you, I learned that God's pocket is deeper than my pocket, so I live out of God's pocket. You better learn to stop living out of your pocket and live out of God's pocket, and the only way you can do that is to give. God expects it. He commands us to give. It's not a suggestion. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 as a man purpose in his heart, so let him give. Lord, if you could just wrap your brains around this, beloved. Here's what the concept 
God expects us to live to be our 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 our, our mantra, our standard operational procedure. This ought to be the banner that's over the head of every Christian to give. See, in the world, they teach you if you want to have something, you got to get something. No, Jesus said, if you want to have something, you got to give something. Preach, Brother Letter. Your financial advisor probably will tell you if you want to have something, you got to get something. Christ taught while he was here, if you want to have something, you got to give something. Well, let's try that out in life. It's just a true fact. If you want something, just give what you want, and that's what you get. If you want somebody to smile at you when you come here on July 4th, turn around and smile at them. Regular people, I'm not talking about them crazy folk, regular people, spiritual people, will smile back at you. Because in life, folks, you get what you get. That's good news and bad news. There's so many people catching hell right now in their marriage, in their relationship, you're just getting what you give. And now you're mad, but it's a law you can't get around. You've been giving hell, now you catching hell. You've been running around, now they running around. You've been mean, now they mean. You left, or where the leaf saw now they left. I came back. In life, you get what you give. Let's go further. Smile at people and see what they, most of them smile back at you. If you want energy and strength, you know how you get energy and strength? You got to give energy and strength. Preach, Brother Leonard. Uh, if you want to be stronger, you got to spend some of your strength to get stronger. You got to lift, move, jump, and throw. You got to expand strength to get strength. Because you get what you give. You want more energy? You got to get up, run, walk, and exercise. If you want to have more energy, you got to spend energy so one day you can have more energy. You give, get in life what you give in life. You want two or three good friends? You got to show yourself friendly. In life, folks, you get what you give. If you want more sex today in your pocket, Learn to give it, because you get what you give. The reason why some people ain't blessed, they ain't giving nothing. And you never will get what you ain't giving. Amen, somebody. What I learned throughout scriptures, God expects us to give. It's the debt we owe. You ain't doing God no favor. You owe God. He just, he just said, give me back some of what I gave you. Because everything about God it's his nature. It's his modus operandi. It's his standard operational procedure. God is a giver. Everything God made was made to give. Man is the only thing God made that wants to take. But God is a giver. God gave us Jesus. Jesus gave the blind man his sight again. Jesus gave the dumb, dumb man his speech again. Jesus gave the sick man his health again. Jesus gave Jairus' daughter her life again. The widow, Jesus gave the widow woman her son again. He gave Mary and Martha Lazarus again. He, he gave his back to the cross. Oh, he's a giver. He gave his hands to the nails. He gave his feet to the spikes. He gave his side to the spear. He gave his head to the to the crowny thorns. He gave his garments to the gamblers. He gave his mother to John. He gave his spirit to God. Jesus is a giver and we'll never more like God in Jesus when we give. Yes, not only does God expect us to give. In that verse, he starts explaining why we ought to give. First of all, folks, you, you need to understand me and understand me clearly. Don't turn me off. It's good stuff if you listen. You ain't blessing God. I, I, I don't say, you ain't blessing the preacher and you ain't blessing God when you hear. Listen, listen. God don't need your money. He said in Psalms 50, God said, I got so much. He said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. 
Ain't nothing you can do about it. You know what it says in Psalms 50 and 10? Here's what God, God don't like to brag, but every now and then he got to remind us who he is, right? So God said, listen, he said, I've got so many cows. You know, listen, this is what the Bible says. This is why I love the Bible. God said, I've got so many cows that I stopped taking inventory of cows and I started counting hills. Psalms 50 and 10. Here's what God said. God said, listen, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to me. God said, I, if I start counting them cattle, we're going to be here too long. He said, I'm telling you, the hill they said, I got a thousand hills that I got cows on. Blood. Everything belongs to God. Haggai 2 and 8, the Bible said, that old prophet said, all the gold and silver are mine, saith the Lord. Psalms 24 and 1, God declared the earth is mine and the fullness thereof belong to me. God said, I don't need your money. Your giving is the debt you owe. And when you give, it's a seed that you sow. Church folk are some of the worst folk when it comes to giving. And really, hate to say it, but sure it is the church of Christ folk can be the most stingy folk when it comes to giving. You know why some of them are stingy? They got this attitude, I'm not giving because y'all can't tell me where the money going. Well, first of all, that's not true here at Southside, but it's irrelevant to your giving talking about tell me where the money's going. You know what I told a lady who told me that I was preaching on time? Well, y'all preachers can't tell me where the money's going. I said, every time you pull up on the parking lot, you parking on it. Every time you open the door, you swinging on it. Every time you step on the step, you stepping on it. Every time you sit in a pew, you sitting on it. Every time the air condition come on, you cooling on it. Every time the heat come on, you heating on it. Y'all hear me? Every time, every time the lights come on, you reading on it. You read, you see your money operating all the time. And it's always amazing me. Folk don't ask their doctor what they're doing with the money. They don't ask their lawyer what they don't know where the doctor lives and what they try. They don't ask nobody but the church. And we transparent here, but, but that's irrelevant to what God commanded you. It's a debt you owe and a seed you sow. And it's amazing. People are all the most about the money. Ain't giving that no way. I had a lady ask me that one time about where my money going. I said, listen, ma'am, uh, your money ain't going nowhere. How far you think $2 going to go? Preach, brother, man. I had another member years ago said I was stealing money. That's a lie. I don't even have the money. The others got the money. I told her to her face, well, if I am stealing, I ain't stole none of yours because you ain't giving that. <laughs> Preach, Brother Lynn. I know y'all think I'm a church. I am, but I'm in the book. Yeah, church folk can be bad, but I remember a story. I don't think that happened now. I remember a story of a conversation was going on in a bank vault. Uh, in, in, in the bank's vault, there was a conversation going on. And somebody asked a $100 bill, where you been? He said, I've been to Saks Fifth Avenue. They asked the 50s, where y'all been? They said, we've been to Marshalls. Then they asked the $20 bills, where y'all been? They said, we've been to Red Lobster. Then they asked the $10 bill, where you been? We've we been to Wendy's. They asked the $5 bill, where y'all been? Well, we've been to McDonald's. Then over in the corner, they heard some shouting going on, some noise. Somebody over in the corner, how, thank you, Jesus. God is good all the time. Thank you, Lord. They went over there with a dollar and two quarters. They asked him, where y'all been? They said, we've been in church. That's what we've been. That, that dollars and quarters stay in church. Everybody else get the big bill. I came by to tell you, giving is a debt we owe. And it's a seed that we sow. The reason you ain't reaping much, you ain't planting much. Folks, it's abundantly. Let me hurry on. I've been here too long. Luke 638. Three illiterate. God expects it. God explains it. And then God expands it. And Luke 38, he says, give. Y'all read it with me. And then it'll be given unto you. He explains it beautifully. You get what you give. That's the explanation. Why do you give? Because if you give, it'll be given unto you. It's a beautiful explanation of the debt we owe in this. It's a seed that we sow. In life, you get what you give. And then he starts talking about how it expands. And I'm going to stick to my seat. He explains that he expected give. 
imperative move, which means it's a, it's a command, not a suggestion, a recommendation. Give. He expects it. Then he explains it right here in the verse. If you give, you'll get. And then he starts talking about the expansion. He says, listen, how do you, how do I expand it? He says, I'll give you, when you give, good measure, press down, shake him together, run it over. Listen to me. Good measure. God wants you and I to have a good life. He said in John 10, 10, he don't just want you to have life. He wants you to have abundant life. In Psalms 23, verse 5, he says he don't just want to fill your cup. He wants your cup to run over. That's good measure. He said for all that is predicated on the command to give. It's the debt you owe. It's the seed that you sow. You can't have a crop if you don't plant nothing. You can't reap if you don't plant. You can't reap if you don't sow. Okay, I'm about to get that. He said, I'll take it and I'll make it good measure. He expects it. He then explained it. And now he said, I will expect. God said, I can expand it. He said, press down. Uh, when you press something down, you can get more in. When you press down, when you're in your suitcase and you got a bunch of clothes, you start pressing it down so you can get more in. No, y'all still ain't got it. When I go to Baskin Robbins to get ice cream, bless my heart, and I say, I want a pint of ice cream. I tell the girl behind me, uh, put it in. Don't just give me two scoops. Press it down. If you press down, you get more in. Preach, brother, and God said, when you give, when you pay the debt you owe and the seed that you sow, God said, I'll take your money, I'll take your gift, and I will press it down. Because when you press it down, you can get more in. And the more you give, the more he press. And the more you'll get, God take your money and press it down. He'll give you good measure. That's abundant life. He don't just fill your cup. He runs it over. But it's all predicated on you giving. But Brother Lennon, I'm sorry. You ain't giving. Brother Lennon, I'm struggling. You ain't giving. Brother Lennon, I ain't never got enough. You ain't giving. It's impossible. Come to me. Call me. Write me. Brother Lennon, I've been giving, paying 10% plus. I've been a uh, generous regard in the check. And I ain't got no money. Come. It don't happen. I've been doing this 38 years. Never had a person. Never, ever, ever, never who gives who ain't got enough. I ain't say you're rich. I ain't say you got a boat. I ain't say you got a beach house and all that. I ain't no, I said you gonna have more than enough. Because God said, I'll take it and make it good measure. He said, I'll press it down so I can get more in. He said, I'll shake it together and run it over. He said, then men shall give unto your bosom. Now notice, he didn't say angels are God. He says, when you give, he arranged for men to give unto you. Listen, if you give to folk, folk will give to you. See, your blessings are custom made and tailor made. I can't get your blessings. You can't get my nose of earth. He says, shall men give unto you. You too concerned about what other folk give it. You need to be concerned about how and what you can do to bless you. Because if God can't, if God give it to you and he find out he can't give it through you, he'll stop giving it to you. God will arrange for people who don't like you to bless you. God will arrange, listen to me, for your enemy to bless you. That's why in Psalms 23 and 5, the Bible said, He anoints our head with oil. Our cup runneth over. In the previous part of the verse, he said, he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemy. Some of you, Lord, why won't you get rid of my enemies? No, God can't get rid of your enemies because he wants them to hang around for the banquet when he prepares that table. And they're looking at you being blessed and can't do nothing about it. He expands it. He expects it. Give. Imperative move. He explains it. What's the explanation? If you want to get, give. 
the same measure you give. People learn that in life. However you treat and do people, however you act in marriage, however you act in, on your job, however you act in your family, and that's what's coming back to you. You just don't like when it come around and it never occurred to you. That's what I'm doing. Same measure. That's the explanation. And then he said, I will expand it. He expects it, explains it, and he expands it. He said, I give you good measure. I press it down. I shake it together. Let's get more room in there. And I give it to you to it's running over. <laughs> Folks, God said, I'll make sure men give unto your bosom when you pay your debt you owe and the seed you sow. God will help when you do right by God. He'll, he'll, he'll make sure. Folk bless you. Uh, there's a story. I need to sneak to my seat because I done got happy here. Uh, two gentlemen were on a private airplane. The plane crashed in a remote region of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and uh, the two gentlemen survived. There were only two survivors, but they're on a remote island out in the middle of nowhere. No cell phone, no, no communication, no way to contact anybody. They survived on this island. It, it's a bad situation. It's windy, it's dark, it's dusty, uh, white capping in the water. One guy was sitting there, cool, calm, and collected. Wasn't nervous, was upset, or nothing. The other guy's pacing up by the water, pacing back and forth. He's frantic. He's hysterical. He looked at his friend. He said, hey, man, we out here remotely, no contact, no family. Nobody knows where we are. We don't know if they're going to ever find us. He said, you're sitting here cool, calm, and collected. How can you be so cool? So I said, well, I'm cool because I pay my tithes. I said, what paying your tithes got to do with this? He said, well, I pay my tithes and I make a million dollars a year. Guy looked at me again, he said, okay, what paying your tithes and how much money you make got to do with this? You stand here cool, calm, and collected. The guy responded, he said, well, see, I pay my tithes and I make a million dollars a year. He said, my pastor gonna find me. <laughs> hey, man, y'all get that on your home. He said, yeah, said, my pastor gonna find me. <laughs> y all, y all, when you do right by God, even people will value and appreciate you and find you and rescue you when you're in trouble. But love, giving is not paying. It is the debt we owe and the seed we sow. When you give the perfect definition for giving is to present something voluntarily without expecting compensation. Hear me again. It's when you present something voluntarily without expecting compensation. It's to relinquish. It is to turn over. It's to sacrifice. It is to bestow a donate, to furnish a gift. That's what giving it is. When we give, we're simply, it's the debt we owe and the seed we sow. God expects it. It's all right there in Luke 638. God expects it. God explains it. And God expands it. So let it be written. So let it be done. The grass withers, the flower fadeth away. The words of God shall stand forever. Let me invite you to Christ. Jesus invites us. You have a part of a winning kingdom. You hear his gospel, the good news of his death, burial, and resurrection. You believe that with all of your heart, you repent of your ways of sin. If you ain't been given right, just repent. Start giving. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, let him that stole steal no more. If you've been stealing for God, stop stealing. Repent of your sin. Confess Jesus as God's son. Join him in baptism. It's imperative. It's a command. You must be baptized in water for the mission of your sin. That adds you to the church. And then you and I have a debt we owe and a seed we sow. Shall we pray? God, we're thankful, mindful, glad, and happy. This opportunity to share this lesson on giving. We pray that hearts are being pricked and minds are being changed in our attitude toward giving. We recognize giving is more than money, 
but you chose money as a gauge of your love for your kingdom. Lord, bless us here as we continue to grow and expand your gospel. We're thankful for the great givers we have here in Southside. We pray that more will be encouraged to see it's a blessing to them and not to us. Lord, bless us. Hide us behind your cross, cover us with your blood. Bless the sick, the maimed, the doomed, the destitute, the least amongst us. Bless us all. Bless the sick, those who are infirm in their bodies. Bless those who are going through the going through. Bless our leaders, our followers, our members. Every component of this church, bless us, hide us behind your cross, cover us with your blood. Now, Lord, as we protect your son's body and your son's blood, as we give, Father, as we pay our debt and sow our seeds, bless it to be all done and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, we are now compelled through Scripture to take the Lord's Supper. Down. <laughs> Listen, it, it's amazing to me some of the indoctrination we've had in the church of Christ. This, your communion is a commandment. It's not an option. So if you know that about communion, some people will break their neck to make sure they get this bread and juice, but then don't give nothing. So if you're going to keep one commandment, you're in debt to the whole law, as James said. Listen, and the same thing with communities. Some people will let visitors come to our church. They, they let them sing. They let them give. They pray. And when it comes to communion, they say, this ain't for you. Well, if the singing for the visitor, if the, if, the, if the giving for the visitor, why is it the communion? The commandment has nothing to do with your faith. This remembers Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. I don't care who you are. It's good to remember. Okay? So, beloved, this is our commandment. I'd be like telling a, a non-Christian they don't not live right because they ain't a Christian. That those rules are just for Christians. No. Even if they're not Christian, it's still right to follow a rule that God gives. Right? So this is for us to remember. We take this bread, this unleavened leaven. Remember how he died on the cross. Let's take it together. He said, not me. At the Last Supper, do this in remembrance of me. And the early church would take it on the first day of every week to commemorate, to memorialize his death, burial, and resurrection. Let's take the bread together. Let's take the cup of them. That's his blood. Thank you, Jesus. A friendly reminder that if you want to come by any weekday, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., myself, Deacons, Johnny Johnson, Danny Davis, and Clarence Wilson, and myself are here to receive your lay-by and or distribute you communion. If we're not here, you'll find a plethora of communion packages in the mailbox out front. If you want to drop your lay-by, oh, please don't drop cash, but slide it under the door. We'll receive it, register it, deposit it in your name. It's time to give. It's time to get happy. It's time to do what we've been preaching about. This is the debt you owe, and it's also a seed that you sow. God's the only one that rewards you for paying your debt. You owe him. He said, but if you pay it, it's a seed. I'll expand it. I'll take it and grow it for you. The best investment you ever make. Get your financial advisor with the best spiritual plan you could ever have in your life. It's to be generous with God. Amen, somebody. Oh, I wish I had a crowd in here today. It's time to give. You can see on your screen to my left and your right, we have three online giving opportunities. At the bottom of the screen, you see, we have a mail-in opportunity. If you're not safe and online, you're not comfortable, or you don't even understand it, our PO box is at the bottom of the screen. You can take your leg by Please don't mail cash. Check a certified funds and mail it to the PO box. Bello, we'll get it, register it, and deposit it in your name. The overwhelming majority of people give online. At the top of the screen, give a five. You can go online. It's safe, it's swift, it's secure. It keeps tab of how much you're giving all year long. Same, give, give a five. By far, our most popular. And then we use PayPal for those who are comfortable with that app. Just, just give on PayPal to the Southside Church of Christ. And then, thirdly, 
But second in popularity is our cash app. Safe, swift, and secure. It'll keep tabulations of what you're giving to the Lord and to the church. You can review it and say, you know what? I ain't doing what I ought to do. I got a debt I owe. And not only that, I got a seed I can sow. Be generous with God. The Bible says, give, Luke 38, and it'll be given unto you. How? Good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over with men pour into your bosom. The same measure you give is what you'll receive in return. Giving is a debt we owe, but a seed we sow. Every other bill you got in life, it's just a debt you owe. It's not a seed you sow. God says, I expect it. God then turns around and explains it. Then God, as only God can do, expands it. So let it be written, so let it be done. The grass withers, the flower fadeth away, but the words of our God shall stand forever. Be sure, double dog sure, you keep your obligation with the debt you owe and the seed you sow. God bless you, God keep you. Have a wonderful day.